everybody. Welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with my good buddy, John Sporov, and we're we're glad to be back, and we have some great stuff we want to talk about today. I'm excited, to actually, to see where the Holy Spirit takes this topic today because it's a, it's a good one. It's broad, but I think it's appropriate, especially in the season we're in right now. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about Drum our presenting roll. sponsor today, brought to you by this episode, brought to you by our friends at Premier Home Loans. In this, you know, this market is crazy. And numbers are jumping all over the place. Interest rates are going crazy. Mm-hmm. But yet there's still people out there that need to purchase real estate. They need to fund real estate. I want to find one of them, by the way. Exactly. I know that, you, you I got, got a house better yeah, to go on the market. Find... So go out there and get qualified because I need you to pre-qualify to buy my house. So how if they that? want to be pre-qualified, yeah. how would they do that? John? They would reach out to premierhomeloansco.com and they would talk to our good friend Dana. And you did say, you said our friends over there, le- legitimately friends over there. You when bet. you want... You, when you like, I want to do business with a friend and you're going to make quick, close friends with Dana. She's going to treat you like family. And, uh, and just trust me on that. You're talking to or listening to two people that she, she absolutely did. And the next best thing to do in business with a friend yeah. is doing business with someone who is a friend of someone that you, there you go. You trust. And I hopefully, I hope you, you trust the pursuit. I'm telling you, these guys are good people. I've done business with them. You've done business mm-hmm. with them. So we've experienced. Uh, you know, the cooking that we are promoting. We've mm-hmm. tasted the cooking, and it is good. Taste and see it that is it is good. So uh, check them out, and uh, and they will take great care of you. Make sure you tell them the pursuit sent you. That would be awesome. That would be really help us. Yeah, we so, get royalties and all that, right? Yeah, millions that, and millions of yeah, dollars per yeah, lead. We don't. It's a beautiful thing. We get nothing, but we're grateful to, to them for their sponsorship. So. Absolutely. Well, man, today I want to talk about, as I mentioned in the opening, I want to talk about a, a topic that um, – I think is exceptionally appropriate for now. And, you know, as, as John, as you know, and as many, many of our listeners and viewers that watch the pursuit know this, cause we talk about it enough, you know, John and I both have a ministry and, um, slightly different, a little bit different on some of the things we're doing, but for the most part, what we're doing is discipling, mentoring, coaching executives, whether they're younger guys or some, in some cases, older guys, we both do, do the older guys. And, and needless to say, the business economy that we're operating and functioning in right now is not what I would say is ideal, right? It's, it's, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of confusion. Um, there's a lot of movement that's taking place in the market right now that is creating all kinds of anxiety and fear and worry. Yeah. And so the topic I want to talk about today is peace because as we, as we press into the covenant promises of God. Let me reestablish what I mean when I say the covenant promises of God. What do I mean by covenant? God has made a covenant with mankind. Mm-hmm. Okay, it began way back. It began way back in Scripture. At the very beginning, God began to establish His covenant with His people, with Adam and Eve, and then and then get into Abraham and some of the great great men of the Old Testament, and then it followed through with ultimately the seal with Jesus Christ. But um, through those, through those men, through those people, God spoke a promise, a covenant promise over mankind. And that covenant promise applies to those who are in relationship with Jesus Christ. Those that have the Holy Spirit residing with them, we are referred to as the seed of Abraham, right? So we, we receive the covenant promises that God spoke of with the, of the nation, of the Jewish nation, because we, by extension, by adoption, yep. are now part of that family. Thank God. So then, yeah, thank God. Amen to that. And so uh, as, we, as, we, as we talk about that concept, then we need to understand, okay, what are the covenant promises of God? What are the things for which God spoke over mankind that don't just apply to then but still apply now, mm-hmm. right? Because once God speaks a covenant, it is. It never can be taken away. That's, that's what's unique about a covenant versus a contract. A covenant is when God speaks it, it is. The yeah. question is what's the other party going to do because God's going to deliver. He's the constant in the equation. <laughs> exactly right. And so so for us, we're, we're the other side of that, that equation. Yeah. And so if God is saying, saying I will, then how do we, how do we tap into that? Well, I, maybe it'd be worth just saying, we've talked about this a little bit on The Pursuit before, but I think reminding people, in your mind, difference between a contract and a covenant from the perspective of the second party. Yeah, and I think very simply, the contract is designed to be broken. Yeah, well, a contract, uh, I agree to provide this service if you agree to pay me, right? So your payment is contingent upon my service. Yeah. And you get the ultimate say. If you say, you know what, I paid you to pour concrete and you only did half the driveway, right? 
you have the right to withhold because I didn't perform my end of the bargain. That's correct. Right? Versus covenant in that scenario, we, yeah. if a, if you made a covenant, which would be kind of crazy with a concrete pourer, yeah. regardless of my ability or whether I deliver or not, you are rendering payment. You yeah. know, it is a... And I'm in, always, I'm always yeah. willing to render payment yeah. as long as you're willing to do the work. There you go. So that so there, here now mm-hmm. steps into the, the, the transition into a covenant because God now has spoken it. Just because he's spoken it doesn't it mean it's guaranteed for you and I. Mm. It requires us to step in to do our part in this relationship. Right. And so the question is then what is our part? If God says it is, he's never going to retract. He's never going to pull away. He's always willing and waiting to deliver on the covenant promises that he mm-hmm. spoke over mankind. Mm-hmm. What is he waiting on? Let me pose that question to you. Think. Yeah. What is God waiting so, on? So I think maybe some people out there with the first answer they'll come up with, and I think it's half the answer is obedience. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go though to illustrate the second part of that with a, you know, I use my kids sometimes. They're like, yeah, thanks dad. But as kids, I remember us telling them all the time. Well, not all the time, but when they would go make your bed, you, t- you, you, this is part of what we do every morning. You go wait, you, you make your bed. I don't want to, I'm late for a second. Go make your bed. Fine. And doom, doom, doom. Upstairs they go. They, they, um, begrudgingly go make their bed and come back down. And you know what we used to tell them all the time is obedience with the, with an attitude is not obedience. It's actually disobedience. Your obedience counted for nothing, right? If you have an attitude like that, you might as well just have said, you know what, dad? No. Mm. And walked out of the house. That's good. So there is an element. And I love where you were going, uh, when you made the distinction about he's always willing to pay to make the payment based on the position and attitude of our hearts, yeah. it's not just obedience, right? To say, okay, you promised it. Now give it to me. That's good. Right. That's really good uh, distinction. Okay. And, and I want to, I want to illustrate that maybe in, in maybe a little bit different way as well, yep. just to drive the point home is what we're talking about here is, is being in right standing, right? What, what allows us to have access to the promises of God is right standing, otherwise known as righteousness, right? And one of the things I think we've talked about here in our previous episode, I think, is is what are the components of righteousness? Mm. And there's two components of righteousness, for, as I understand it. The first one is what I would call positioning, to be positioned. Mm-hmm. So what that means is in order to have access to the promises, right, in order for that doorway to be opened, I have to be positioned properly. What does that mean? In order to have access, I have to be a part of the family. Mm. So from a from a theological standpoint, what does that mean? That means that I have received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit resides within me. I've been adopted, as Scripture says, into the family of God through through the blood of Jesus, right? And now, because of that, I am now positioned as a son, okay? Yep. Just like your example, that your son that was defiant to make his bed, he's positioned as your son. That's never going right. to change. Right, Okay, 100%. But there's another component, that you're looking for here as a father. Before you get to that, would you remind people out there that, so, by the way, there's a great book on this called Adopted Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. We should have it like in a drawer. Right in we drawer. probably do. Somebody had to guess. But, but, uh, Hutch wrote it. So it, it, that, that's <laughs> the, the little, that's why we're chuckling about it. And it is a great book, but, but one of the things that you point out is because we're quick to dismiss ourselves as being in the family. We're, we're the first ones to disqualify our family, just like Adam. Mm-hmm. Our, our, ourselves from the family, just like Adam was. Yeah. God had to go f- search for him in the garden and said, Adam, where are you? And he was where? Hiding behind a fig, uh, like fig leaves. Really? Like God had hiding. to find him. Right. So he, I think he humored him to play the game and say, Adam, where are you? I know exactly where you are. But the point is that the, the illusion that I'm outside the family and I can point to the thing that make, that makes me cover myself in shame, just acknowledge the fact that if you're a believer, you're in the family. Okay, you, our, your life could be better right now. Sure, you're in a place maybe of a little, some disobedience in this area, and there's something to work on. God's best for your life you're not experiencing. Okay, but you're in the family. Yeah, right. Amen. So they're they're positioned. Well, you can't go anywhere in righteousness until you're positioned. Right. Right. So how do we how do we attain full righteousness? How do we walk in the full favor of God? How do we how do we receive the blessing, the promise, all the things that we want access to for that individual that's out there that John just described? Yeah. That you made that decision at some point in your life that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And you're going, yeah, but my life, mm. there's no impact. There's no different. I don't feel different than my next door neighbor. I don't feel right. like different than my coworker. So what, what's what's going on? Here's where I would challenge you is maybe the area you need to start looking at is the second area of righteousness, and that is alignment. 
So your position as a son of God through Jesus Christ. Now, the role that we play moving forward is how do I, on a constant day-by-day, moment-by-moment basis, how do I continually remain aligned to the will of my Father? As opposed to what the world desires, as opposed to what our flesh desires, all those kind of things that distract us and take us off target, right? Mm-hmm. And it's when, it's when we go off target, it's not that our salvation is lost, but when our focus is lost, now we lose alignment, and now we're not receiving all the blessings and the promises for which God has established for us. And so we're going, man, why aren't I experiencing these things? Well, check alignment. Check alignment. See if you're aligned. And, yeah. and that's a whole other episode to talk about mm-hmm. alignment. However, I want to talk about one of the specific promises that we want to access, and that's peace. Okay. Right? God has made a covenant of peace with his children. And it was it was ultimately manifest through Jesus Christ, right? Take a look at with me, if you would, John. Open up yep. with John chapter 14. I think that's exactly where I was trying to find Yeah. Right now. And go verse 25, 25 through 27. This this is really good because Jesus kind of seals the covenant of peace with with his children, you and I. What's he say here? Go ahead. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Okay, stop right there. So so what is is Jesus saying? Kind of paraphrase what, what he's I love it. This is exactly where I was trying to go. Uh, and he says it again in John 16 as well, that, that he says right before he goes away, he says, I've got to go because I have a lot more to say to you. Okay. And if I don't go, I won't send the Holy Spirit. And that, that is this. It's, it's that the Holy Spirit, in a, even in John 16, he says he doesn't even speak of his own accord. He only says what the Father has said. So there's unity amongst the Trinity around uh, what they're trying to say. The Holy Spirit will bring you into all truth. So, so yeah, so uh, this is where I want to hit on. This. Okay. So the Father will send him mind, and he will teach you, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Yes. So think about what I just said, that in order to experience all that God has for us, we have to remain in alignment. Jesus speaks to it right here and says, here's the cool thing. You don't have to just memorize these things mm-hmm. and, and hope to recall on them. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you a gift. And that gift is the Holy Spirit, the mm-hmm. advocate. And his job, one of his jobs, is to remind you of the things that I've told you about. That's why it's so important we understand the Word of God and we read the Word of God. But he says, and I will and I will remind you and I will show you everything you need to what? Remain aligned. To stay connected to me. And then it's not by chance that Jesus says what he says next. What's he saying in verse 27? Oh, this is awesome. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, so what Jesus does here, this is really cool. What Jesus does is he draws a distinction. First of all, one of the things he says is immediately, it's not a new paragraph, it's not a new thought, it's it's a continuing thought here. Jesus says, my Holy Spirit will come, it will come inside of you, and it's there to remind you and to teach you of all the things that I've told you. Mm -hmm. And he says, here's the deal, peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. And then what's he say here? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid because I do not give as the world gives. So I want to talk about that for a second. So let's, let's define peace as the world defined peace. How, if, if you were to walk up to the man on the corner and say, what is peace? What do you think the yeah. most common answers would be? Well, I think the, the most common answer would be um, that circumstance drive. It, it'd be the same to ask about joy. And confusing it with with happiness, that circumstances create my peace. So if I'm in a place of peace, I can tell you that my 401k is doing well. I'm I'm steady at work. My relationship with God and my wife and my kids are good. Like there's there's elements that certainly drive peace. But I would look. I, I think the most common answer would be circumstance driven. Yeah. The, the circumstantial yeah. a- outward things that impact and determine peace. Right. Let me say it another way. I think I think the most common answer, and you said it but I'm going to summarize it in one phrase. It's it's the absence of conflict. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay? Yep. Whether it's war between nations, yeah. whether it's conflict in relationship, whether it's conflict in my bank account, mm-hmm. whether it's conflict at work, right? Whatever it is, it's it's the absence of conflict. So the world says the, the peace that you're looking for is the absence of conflict. The only problem with that is that's completely in direct opposition to what the Word of God teaches Totally. It says, Jesus even warned us um, in 16, in chapter 16, he says, these things I've spoken to you, end of the chapter 1633, these things, what things, everything that preceded that, I've spoken to you, 
so that what's the point of me telling you all this so that you may have peace yeah yeah and in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer i've overcome the world so in other words i, I feel like what you just said is the absence of, of conflict is peace our default position as believers should be a place of peace yeah conflict in it with god and man has it got accomplished on the cross yeah so our default position should be one of peace yeah so right? so so back to, back to that i want to hit on this a little bit deeper because i want to make sure we understand this because jesus is saying listen i don't give as the world gives mm -hmm. the, the world wants to offer you a counterfeit peace and one of the counterfeits of peace that the world wants to offer you is the absence of conflict here's another one here's another counterfeit to peace that a lot of people would state Peace is financial security. Mm -hmm. When I have enough money in the bank, right now I can relax and I can experience peace. That is a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> Ask a rich dude if that's true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, mean I, uh, I, I mean, I'm rich compared to people in, in third world right. countries, right? As compared to Elon Musk, I'm not rich. Right. The, the point of the matter is all of us can understand this concept. If you have yeah. any amount of money at all, when the economy begins to fail, if you have anything in a savings account or in stocks or whatever, 401k, whatever it is, you know, it, I, th I think in some ways, the more money you have, the more more anxiety it creates, right? That The rich man right now has significant anxiety right now. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he's trying to figure out, how do I protect this? Mm -hmm. how, where am I going to put it? How am I going to save it? How am I, I don't want to lose it. All these kind of things. So, again, that's another counterfeit to peace is to say, hey, peace is financial security. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not. The world says it is. But Jesus here in John 14 says, listen, I don't give as the world gives. So. I want to turn my attention away from how does the world choose to define peace, and I want to talk about how Jesus describes peace. What, one thing I want you to look at, pull up, let's go Old Testament here. Ooh, let's go, go back. Old Testament. Go and we're back. going to look at Isaiah 54.10. Isaiah, Isaiah 54.10 here. And let's see what the prophet Isaiah talks about here when he re when he speaks about the covenant of peace that God has made with his children what does he say yeah for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but my kindness shall never depart from you nor shall my covenant of peace be removed says the lord who has mercy on you okay a lot of things here so what is isaiah saying when he talks about the mountains in in those type of, what's he saying well he's saying there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in your life including i mean just disruption and and violence and He's not saying peace is sitting in a valley, right, with no Yay, the no walk. harm, right, no no problems. It's just quiet tranquility. Anybody can have peace there. Sure they can. Right. Sure they can. What he's saying, the prophet is saying, listen, this is gonna be, this is gonna get hard, so much that the mountains will be shaken. In, in mm -hmm. some cases, literally. Mm -hmm. In other cases, figuratively. We're the mountains of our life, right? Whatever mountain you've created in your life, your family, your money, your possessions, all these, your job, right? Your, all these mountains that we create, these idols, he's saying, man, they're going to get shaken. They're going to get rocked because this world is declining. It's a Babylonian empire controlled by the enemy. All these things are going to collapse and fall. He's saying, you're going to have a hard time. However, what does he say? My covenant of peace will remain. So he says, the prophet says, it's going to be difficult. But yet, what the prophet is also saying is God has given us a gift, and that is the ability to operate in a place of peace in the midst of chaos and in the midst of conflict. Yep. And then what does he say at the very end of this yeah. scripture? Uh, who, that this is the God who has mercy on us that, that was the... So it, it says all of those things, and it says, says the Lord who has mercy on you. So yeah. he does it out of a spirit of compassion and, and, and mercy. mercy and compassion. Here's the cool thing. What did Jesus here's one of the beautiful things that Jesus brings to the table is, is when, when God sent his son Jesus to the earth to walk the earth, right? What's cool about that is now the son of God experienced the struggle of man. I mean, I mean, guys, we worship a God that can relate to the human race. It's not some God up in heaven that's going, man, I don't have any idea what these guys struggle with. I, man, I sure screwed up when I created these guys. No, he sent his son to walk through the fire, to walk through the mountains that are being shaken, to walk through temptation, to walk through uh, difficult times, to walk through adversity and conflict and all that. Jesus walked through conflict. Yes, he did. But yet he walked through conflict in the midst of peace and perfection, right? 
So the cool thing is we have a God in heaven that's compassionate and has mercy for us. Why? Because his son sits at the right hand and he understands the struggle of mankind. He yeah. understands the things we go through, man. So give yourself a break on this, okay, guys? And and realize that the fact that it's okay to experience anxiety. It, 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 he doesn't say, don't experience anxiety, don't experience fear, don't experience worry. He says, when you do experience these things, let me show you the pathway out. Let me show you how to experience peace in the midst of uncertainty and scary, scary things. One of the best examples, and we've talked about this several times on this podcast, one of the best examples is, is when they're on the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. right? Jesus, is he in a peaceful place? He's asleep on the boat through the storm. Yeah. And so, and so when the storm comes and, and the disciples get upset and they wake up Jesus, you know, and we've, we've talked about this in several different contexts, but one of the things I think Jesus is frustrated by, and we don't see this in the text, I think you can almost kind of read between the lines here, is when Jesus stands up and there, he's like, what, what, what? He's like, we're going to die. Yeah. And Jesus says what? Peace be still. Yep. And it's almost as though he turns to his disciples and says, are you happy now? Exactly. Is this, is yep. this what you wanted? So, now you believe me that we're going to cross because you don't see waves? Yeah. Right. Okay, then let me go back to sleep. And yeah. so, and so, what's the? There's a lot of nuggets in this moment, but here's one I want you guys to take away because this is what I'm taking away from it. Is okay if we are to, if we are to learn how to experience peace in the midst of chaos and in the midst of the storm, just like the disciples were. So, what's the lesson? Jesus is saying to him, "Listen, if you want to experience my presence, you have to be present mm -hmm. in the moment. Mm -hmm. Be present." in order to experience my presence. We don't experience the presence of God in the future. We experience the presence of God in the present. So he says, be present in the moment, embrace the journey, and in that, if you allow me to take control of things, if you, if you trust me in mm -hmm. my word, mm -hmm. that I'm a God that loves you, that knows what's best for you, that has a plan for your life, and has already equipped and empowered you to accomplish those things, that's all part of identity. If you've embraced those things, when the chaos comes, it allows us to release it, right? It, isn't it crazy, though, that we, we have an easy time with, I was even thinking about the 23rd Psalm and David's perspective on this thing, that the, the first half of it is all about the, the, the whole peace in the valley deal. Mm -hmm. and, and we hope and expect and want that when we're aligned position with God, um, that the fruit of that will be great circumstances but he said tribulation is coming like in your words what you just said chaos is coming the, you're gonna be on a boat in a in a tempest on the lake mm -hmm. or on the sea and and that's the measure that's the test of our of our peace i think about david i mean imagine how neurotic you you might be tempted to be as david just think about we know his story and now he's in the cave and all of a sudden running from who saul and all of a sudden Saul just says, hmm, I think I'm going to go spend the night in that cave and goes to the very cave. Like he can't get away from this guy, right? And just imagine how that might create this anxiety and fear and all of this that this within him. But yet it's the same David that says, um, after, you know, the Lord being his shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures, still waters, all the things you just described as peace. And then he says, yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in the midst of that, I fear no evil. That's I right. have peace. That's right. For why? Because God is with me. His rod, staff, comfort me. And then it says this, and I, this, I want to make sure to, to highlight this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runs over. If we could get in the habit of beginning to look at, even in the midst of the, the chaos and, and, uh, and turmoil that sometimes invades our life, mm. To say this, that at this place, this is a table that I get to have communion with my father in a place of trust, knowing that he's going to get me through it, right? That's peace. Mm -hmm. In fact, not that I am perfect at this, but this, here's why I'm learning to get. I've had this thought in, you know, in, in not terribly life-threatening ways or whatever, so granted, but I'm practicing it, and that is this. The, this thing that's in front of me right now that's causing me distress and heartache or concern or whatever is actually evidence that I've already overcome it. Mm. 
Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Because he said that I'll be I'll overcome in all things, right? And as long as I'm taking a breath, that means that there's still hope for me, yes. right? Yes. And so the present circumstances in front of me is actually evidence that I've already overcome it. He, he, and let me add to that because I, I think that's a beautiful introduction to what I wanted to say. And that is so many of it, this is another lie we buy into. We think peace is achieved with some sort of outcome. Mm. As soon as this happens, mm. I will experience peace. That's a lie. He's saying, don't focus on the outcome. The outcome's in my hands, his hand, not my hands, right. God's hands. God says, the outcome is in my hands. I want you to allow me to have the outcome, whatever that thing is that you're, that you're not content with, the thing that you're not peaceful about, the thing you're anxious about, that you're afraid of. Let me have that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to back away from the outcome, mm-hmm. and I want you to focus on the journey. Peace is found in the journey. Peace is not found in an outcome, Okay. Until we get home, that's that's the, the real deal. If you want to experience peace, quit focusing on an outcome and instead be present in order to experience his presence. And in his presence, Jesus literally in the boat with the disciples, he says to them, my presence with you is enough. That is your peace, not that. Right. But me in your midst, that's all you need to your point because the outcome's already taken care of. It is. He already knows what's best. He said to the disciples, let's get in the boat. We're going to go to the other side. So what part we, of that do you not understand? Right. So we're going to make it to the other side. I didn't say it wasn't going to be bumpy, but we're going to get there. Yeah. Right. And so, so you're right. So it's like, yeah, his presence is the proof that he's going to get us to the other side. Amen. All right. So hopefully we've given you some nuggets, man. I'm still, I'm personally, I'm really pressing into this right now because there's a lot of things in my life that could be creating significant anxiety. We all have mm-hmm. them, man. We all have our list. All right. I'm not alone. Uh-huh. We all have our list and go ahead and make that list of the things you're anxious about. And he gives us a great, great order in Philippians four, six, and seven, how to walk through this. Do not be anxious about anything. He says, listen, this anxiety you're experiencing, stop. Let me tell you how do not be anxious, but in everything through prayer and petition. So he says, Pour your heart out to me with thanksgiving. That's what's cool. Mm, That's what you're talking about. Yes. I'm giving thanks for something I don't even know what, what it's right. going to be. Why? Because right. I trust him. I trust him. I don't know what the outcome is. I want, I, God, I give you my prayer and my petition. This is what I would like for the outcome right. to be. But but I'm going to give thanks. Why? Because I don't know what's best for me. You know what's best for me because mm-hmm. you created me. Therefore, I'm surrendering and submitting this to you because I know whatever the outcome is, I'm good with it because you're in control. Give thanks, and he says, "Here's the here's the payoff. Here's here's the the bonus that the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Meaning, intellectually, it makes no sense that I'm experiencing peace in the midst of this situation. But he says, I'm going to give you a supernatural peace that transcends all understanding. And here's what it'll do: it'll mm. guard your heart, and it'll guard your mind in Christ Jesus, and it'll allow us to experience peace in a way that the world can never offer. That is so awesome that he says Romans eight twenty eight: all things are going to work together for good." You're going to get to the other side. And when you experience this, just to reiterate what you just said and what scripture says, he's also going to put a guard around our heart to say, have peace, have courage, trust me. And it's going to be there to remind us that until he comes, until he brings it about, we can have peace. Love it, man. Hey, I hope you guys are encouraged. I know I was and will continue to be. If you have questions, thoughts, comments, feedback, scripture, yeah arguments we want to hear it all man drop it in the comments we'd love to hear back from you and uh, we're just we're just really blessed that you took 28 minutes out of your schedule today to be with us and so i pray that the lord would give it back to you and multiply that tenfold amen thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys next time right here on the pursuit